When people talk about uranium prices, they're typically talking about the spot price, when in fact what they really should be watching and following is the long-term price of uranium. However, that long-term price of uranium can also be misleading. There's a variety of terms and things that are associated with those contracts that actually change the ultimate price that is paid by that utility when that uranium shows up. What I want to run over today is four things that you really need to understand about that long-term price in order to follow it and to understand really when it's going to be affecting the underlying market. The first thing you need to understand about the long-term price as published is it's an indicator. It's not necessarily a transaction record. What I mean by that is it's not the average price that was paid for uranium in any particular week or any particular time. What this means is that the published long-term price is really a reference point. It's not the transaction point. There will be other aspects added to that baseline, such as point of origin, jurisdiction, flexibility, and it'll be pegged to other markets as well. So for investors, if you're really only watching the long-term price as published, what you're missing is the nuance. You can't from that see the tightening of the market, which is really flowing from all of the other terms associated with those contracts. The second point to understand is that hybrid pricing is really now the norm. Gone are the days when you're looking at purely base escalated contracts. Most deals today are mixing a fixed base price of a certain volume with a market-related component. That market-related component is often tied to public spot price. What this means is that only a portion of that supply is actually locked in at a set price going forward. In fact, in many of the most recent contracts, what we're seeing is only about 25 to 40 percent of the volume is actually price-based. The rest of it is actually floating with the market on its performance. We're now seeing situations where floors are being built in and ceilings are being built in to protect both the buyer and the seller. Floors right now are running into the $60, $70 point, which protects the buyers from any jumps in the market. Whereas the, on the other side, the ceilings are up in the $120 to $140 range right now, which protects the seller and makes sure that they can take advantage of those higher prices as the market fluctuates. So for investors, it means that a tighter market is going to translate into revenue growth that is not necessarily evident by that quoted baseline long-term price that we all see published from time to time. Everyone knows uranium's short. What matters is when it breaks. Most investors guess and miss. This report shows the signals that reveal when the turn begins. Order the report now and get ahead of the next uranium breakout. Point number three is that flexibility in these contracts is starting to shrink. Flexibility refers to whether within these contracts, the purchaser or the utility has the ability to move their volumes around up and down, shift the timing of delivery to better suit whatever is happening at that point in time. Back in 2020, that flexibility was up and around the 30% range. That's what we were seeing built into contracts. Right now, this year, it's down now around the 5% flexibility. What that means is you've got, again, a lot more negotiating power leaning towards the producers. One thing to keep in mind is that utilities right now globally have got about 200 million pounds of uranium that is uncovered and uncontracted between now and 2030 and nearly 2 billion pounds between now and 2040. That is probably the highest number we've seen in 30 years in terms of uncontracted uranium requirements. What this means to investors is that as flexibility vanishes, utilities are forced to lock into more material sooner, and it increases and heightens that contracting activity. The fourth thing investors need to remember about long-term pricing is that the supply side has no quick fix. With all of this rising contracting, we're seeing that the supply side and new mines coming online is running rather thin. In fact, we haven't seen any new greenfield mines coming online, except for maybe Kazakhstan in well over a decade. On top of all of that, if you look at mines that are currently being depleted, if you look at the operational risk associated with mining, if you look at the jurisdictional challenges that we've seen over recent months and years, we've got this supply backdrop that is structurally tight. What this means is the long-term price stability that you're currently seeing is really masking a market that's quietly running out of slack. As a matter of fact, for the last eight years, we've seen global mine production falling far short of reactor demand on a year-by-year -year basis. What this means for investors is that the flat long-term price that we've been witnessing for over a year now is more likely the calm before the storm. When we see this uncovered demand, 
collide with limited supply, we will expect to see price adjustments that can be very sharp. And in that scenario, producers and well-positioned developers will benefit the most. So remember, the long-term price is a very valuable signal to follow. However, it's not the whole story. It's not taking into consideration the terms that are being built into these contracts. It's not taking into consideration a deepening supply problem. It's not taking into consideration flexibility and other important terms that are built into this pricing. And right now, the picture points towards a very tightening cycle. For investors, that means it's time to pay attention. All of these tightening signals are leaning towards a price correction that could be very severe.